Okay, cool. Okay, uh, we'll just start with JavaScript first. Uh, oh. Do you know how it is hoisting? Yeah, so basically what happens, so when uh, when the application, we have two phases in the JavaScript. First is the uh, compilation and the second is execution. So with the help of a compilation, what happens? Suppose we have created some functions then variable with a var. Then we have created some classes. So in the compilation phase, what happens? So it get hoisted at the top of the scope. I can say it get attached to the global window object. So if we try to access that variable before its declaration, so we'll get undefined. So this is how the variable get hoisted for us. And latent const also going to hoist, but it is not uh, attached to the global window. It has a separate memory location in the script block. So if we debug into the developer tool, we can see over there latent const has the same memory location is different than the global one. So we can say that the these are the few things uh, according okay. to comes with the hoisting. Okay, so what is closure? Yeah, so basically we can say that the uh, we have a function which is inside another function. So it's a related to the lexical scope basically we can say. So we have a different scope into the our app, JavaScript application. So uh, the inner function has its own scope variable as well, then a parent one as well and the outer scope as well. So this is related to the lexical scope. So uh, what happens? So uh, we can access the parent scope variable into the inner one function. So when we call the parent one function, so it will return the inner function method. So and uh, when we get that, uh, uh, we can say the return function to the another variable and when we call it, so we'll get the exact result from the inner function. So this is how it get executed as a closure. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, do you know what is what a prompt is? Yeah, so yeah, so basically what happens, so JavaScript is a, a synchronous, so it get a one by one get executed line by line. So basically what happens, suppose I want to create some async functionality into the JavaScript. So earlier we use a callbacks over there. So we have to write some callback after some timer, it get executed. So this is how we do earlier. So but what happens exactly when we have a multiple asynchronous call, which is depend upon the another one. So this is get very tedious. So because of that, get the call, uh, we can say that callback hell get triggered so it is it is very messy to uh, changes into the callback uh, callback in multiple callbacks as well so promises comes with the uh, cleaner and uh, we can say that the more uh, advanced feature with uh, writing the asynchronous so we have to uh, uh, it accepts two parameters so first one is the uh, callback functions sorry it's a function it executed and another one is a uh, to access that variable. So we can have uh, two pages over there, three pages actually we can say, resolve, reject and pending. So these are the three comes with it. So when the uh, promise get executed or get resolved, then we have to get that value in the then form, then with, with the dot then. And if we get uh, rejected uh, from the call, con from the promise, then we have to capture into the catch block. So this is how we use promise. Okay, do you know curring? Yeah. So, yes, yes. Yeah. So basically, suppose I don't I don't know about the how many parameter will be coming to the after the uh, the bracket one by one. Suppose I have some, then one inner bracket, then another two and another three. So this is how it get uh, attached to the n number of. So we can with the help of function currying, we can access that variable like the way I talked about the for the closure. So parent scope has another variable and we are passing to that variable to the inner function as well. So we can pass it. Like that. Um, can you write an example for it? Yeah, 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 sure. Let me share my screen. Yeah. Let me know if you are able to see. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Okay, so I can say some one, two, three the way I can call it so function sum will take first parameter as a, a and inside it we return we return uh, we'll check first b is a variable not not it is then return function which take another parameter so 
you can see my screen correct yeah yeah okay okay so okay. in that um, okay it's fine I'd... okay okay fine. okay so i can check uh, oh yeah of... yeah but, okay okay yeah uh do you know uh what are new esx features okay so JavaScript. yeah yeah so okay so basically esx comes with the arrow function then it comes with the rest and uh, rest and spread operators and then we have a generators as well then we can create a module for a separate file and import that module into the another file then we have destructuring as well then the we have the object literals as well so these are some new methods comes with it and we have some array methods uh, no not the array object method comes with it so object dot entry then object dot values then object dot keys so these are some common features comes with the latest version of es6 okay okay what is the difference between object dot freeze and const okay so basically what happens so with, if we declare as a const then uh, and if we declare as a const but uh, we have object as a const okay let me give an example so it can be easy let me just write some small example const of j so in that case what happened so if i have a equal to one so okay so i have now a equal to one sorry a equal to one so in that case what will happen so if i do object dot eight equal to two so it will get uh, re reinitialized basically so we are not re reinitializing we are changing the value from the object so reference get not changes the original memory location will be same but we are changing the value of it so because of that we can do the similar kind of thing so with the help of freeze we cannot do that thing so it will be free so it will be a read only only we can say with the freeze okay okay cool okay now we'll just move to angular um uh, we know what how does the initialization of angular application happens okay so how the angular uh, application get load to the okay, yeah. okay yeah okay so basically we have we use app root a uh, tag into the index.html file basically that is the root we attach to the body tag so when the angular application get load it get created from the main.ts file so we have to pass there or whatever the module to be loaded over there so we usually dip as a default angular application cli it has an app dot module over there and inside that app dot module over there the bootstrap is a bootstrap is a parameter over there inside that we have to pass whatever the component need to be loaded when the it get a local as to double zero so this is how the angular app dot component dot ts get loaded to the dom okay what are decorators yeah so we have multiple decorator decorator so whenever it comes with the at the rate so we have at the rate input then output then component then this module so we can say that this is this gives us some uh, idea about what we are doing over there so with the help of a decorator we write the our angular application so yeah yeah what are dependency injections okay so uh, yeah so basically what happens so dependency injections allow us to inject the whatever service into the another service so by the help of the injectable parameter a decorator we use uh, it uh, it allow us to utilize that service into the another component or one service into the another service so this is how it helps us to write the uh, dependent tree for the services with the dependency tree okay uh, okay uh, what are directives yeah so basically we have three types of the directive so first is the component directive it it is the special kind of the directive it has its own template and then we have the structural directive and then we have the behavioral directive the structural directive nothing but the uh, we can say that the when we use ng if then ng for then ng switch then ng style these are some structural directive whenever our, whenever we want to do some manipulation into the dom at the time we use uh, depend upon some condition we have to change the dom at the time we use the structural directive and about the behavioral directive we have to suppose i want to create a button so depend upon the whatever parameter i am passing over there it should show the background color according to that so i will create one directive and i will pass that uh, directive to the one uh, that button so that button will be the uh, host listener for us so that is listening that whatever directive is saying that for us so with the help of the behavioral directive we can do the that kind of thing with the help of the uh, event listener and the host binding okay uh, what are the life cycle what are the difference between the component and directive 
yeah so basic difference is that the component has its own template so directive doesn't have that so we can say that the component is a special kind of the directive it has its own template okay. uh, how can we communicate between the components okay so basically we have multiple ways to do it suppose i have parent child relationship at that time we use input and output then if i have some interdependent component i want to communicate at that time i can do a so service based layer i can create one service and i can create observables sorry subject over there or a behavioral subject so with the help of that we can do and uh, if i if i we, if we are following the ngrx into the our project so we can create a state management in with the help of the store so we can communicate into the any component into the with the help of the store so these are some few common methods we can use okay so uh what is observable difference between the observable subject observable and subject versus behavioral subject okay so subject or said behavioral subject yeah okay so okay so basically what happens so behavioral subject has its uh, initialization value so both are behave as the same uh, both can emit some value and both can subscribe as well so difference between both is only the it has its initialized value with a behavioral subject so that is not in the subject only okay and observable and subject what uh, is different yeah so observable it just emits some value and subscriber gets subscribe but uh, the in case of the subject it can subscribe as well and it can emit the values as well okay do you know uh, any operators we use for rsjx yes we use most of so basically whenever any kind of the operator we have to use before that we have to include the pipe then this is the uh, we can say the entry point for the rxjs pipe op operator so we use that and we uh, we we usually use a map over there then we can use a from event i used multiple times in my current project and the previous project as well then uh, we have used uh, the switch map we have used then take uh, we have used then take until also we have used so these are some common we can use then suppose i have multiple apis that data is coming from the multiple sources that also i can use with the help of the fog join so it will create a, a array of object for us to get some data at the single time so we can use the multiple operators according to the, our needs okay so uh, you do you not debounce what is why do we use debounce yeah so okay so basically suppose i have one search box okay and whenever i am typing something the that query should be passed to the our api and that api will give us some data so but uh, suppose i want to search for a keyboard but i am typing only k k that is also one api is going then i type e then k and e k and e that going to the back end so that is not uh, the exact case we are looking for so when i type keyboard key keyboard only at that time only the it should go so this is the problem with the uh, keystroke or a key down or key up event so to overcome that we use a debouncing so with the help of debouncing what we can do when user stop for typing and after some millisecond of time that uh, time only the api get trigger so this is how debouncing works for us okay uh, do you know what is hot, hot and cold observable what's the difference between them hot and cold observable i heard about it uh, maybe related to the only subscription it will return multiple subs multiple values for us like the okay i'm not sure right now. okay cool uh, and uh, do you know how why do we use well, like first uh, first version of the angular was angular js they used angular js into js for the angular application and then they used uh, typescript do you know why they use typescript okay yeah so okay so basically what happens so with the help of typescript we suppose we can say that the more type checking is happening with a typescript so whatever we declare some variable where i equal to one and if i trying to access i equal to name or something i am assigning to pawan so it will give me error so we can say that the, it it has a more uh, strict typing che type checking so it helps us developer to uh, get the errors uh, checking into the while only coding so instead of going to the runtime into the dom or into the browser console 
so that is the one thing i can say and uh, another thing for the uh, typescript uh, we have a multi it says it kind of the we can say that the it has a all feature of the javascript including with the latest feature of the es6 comes with it so maybe that comes with it so that's why most of things we really do with the typescript and another thing the typescript is based upon the class so that is also the one part of it so we we create classes as well into the javascript as well but uh, we don't we really don't use like the way the classes works in the typescript so in the javascript we use okay. a prototype and also okay uh, uh um, i mean okay i mean oh uh, yeah i have do you have any questions i'm done with my interview do you have any questions for me yes i have only one question related to the project so what what uh, is the project and yeah actually i can't tell you about that even i am not aware of it <laughs> honestly speaking okay. uh, yeah but there's a project in which we need uh, angular plus react okay. i think maybe because of that they are looking for a candidate who has experience or both or knowledge of both one okay so yeah okay then no that's it yeah okay then okay cool thank yeah, you yeah thank you bye bye bye